Okay, so Hiroshi is just on with us from Japan, and he was just saying that they have tested over 500 uh, samples with neonicotinoids, four neonicotinoids in urine. Is that correct? Yeah, urine samples. Of urine samples. Mammoth, ma primary mammoths and their children of uh, up to 60 people. Wow, okay, 60 people, mostly moms and children? Yes. And what are you finding? What are you finding as far as neonicotinoids go? Excuse me? What are you finding? What levels of neonicotinoids are you finding? Uh, in? Well, uh, the environmental toxicologists are analyzing. Only 100 samples were, uh, uh, were analyzed. Okay. So we still have 400 samples to be analyzed. Okay, so only 100 have been analyzed. You have 400 to go, you have 400 total. But the, yeah, the information. Oh, 500 total. Okay. Wow. Very exciting. So please do let us know when you have the results of that information. Okay. Yes. I will. Okay. Great. And we were, I was just there in Tokyo and uh, Fukuoka, and they are working on glyphosate testing as well. And they are collaborating with the scientists. Yes, they're collaborating with the scientists that we have connected them with. So they're working on getting a lower detectability level. The one that they currently have now is still disturbing. They tested all kinds of flowers, and uh, most of the flowers tested above one part per million of glyphosate in it, uh, which is, you know, very concerning. So, um, most of the flowers in Japan likely have glyphosate uh, levels on them, which are, of course, much higher than what has been shown to destroy gut bacteria. So um, we're glad that they're going to be doing further testing to detect even lower levels because in some foods like baby foods that we tested or orange juice or you know, other foods like that, there are lower levels which are still very concerning. So thank you very much for being on with us from Japan. We're honored to have you, we appreciate it. Ann Temple is on from um, Michigan, sorry, Wisconsin. Oh my God. Every time, <laughs> sorry, I've known her for like six years. Okay, Wisconsin, I just have to keep thinking cheese. Okay, and Ariana is a filmmaker. Does anybody object to Ariana recording some of this and possibly using any of it for a film that she's producing? No? Okay, yeah. all right. Cool. Not at all. <laughs> uh, no. Ann Williams, I've seen you on many times before. Where are you from again, Ann? Uh, Pen Pensacola. Oh, that's right, from Florida. That's right, yes, okay. And, um, Great, and Ariana, okay. And Max is here from Pennsylvania for those who didn't, who didn't miss, uh, didn't hear him introduce himself. Okay, so we're gonna get started right away because we have a, um, a bit of a, um, a, a so I have a process that I wanna go through with somebody and I want it to be with somebody I don't know well. So I need a volunteer. Let's see, somebody I don't know super well. Maybe Anne? Do you want to go through this with me? Are you willing to answer some questions? Sure. Okay, sure. great. Okay, so um, <clears throat> proposal. So Moms Across America, our mission, it, it, we exist to educate and inspire mothers and others to transform the food industry and environment, creating healthy communities together. Okay. Now we have over 1,400 volunteers, leaders, and hosts that have said that they want to work with Moms Across America to volunteer to do something. Now, do you think I have had the time to connect with them all? Oh, of course not. Oh. <laughs> and do you think that there's a lot more that every single person could be doing, right? That there, that we could definitely be effective, <clears throat> connect with more people and all of that? Yes, so um, I came up with an idea. It's called Divide and Connect. Now, why divide? Because we moms want to be efficient, right? And we have the whole United States to reach. So we're gonna divide it up into six sections, the Northwest, the, the um, Southwest, the North Midwest, the North South, uh, sorry, the South Midwest, the Northeast and the Southeast. And we have 12 regional leaders. Everybody gets a buddy, okay? We have some regional leaders that have already stepped up, but we would like some more. And, um, and so consider this as, as I'm talking about it. And those 12 regional leaders will each call only eight state leaders because each area has about eight states. And they'll call the two buddies so they'll connect them. And so it could be only four phone calls if they can get them both on a conference call at the same time, right? To connect them and get related. And then those eight state leaders, um, actually it'll be 16 because they're buddied up. Those 16 state leaders will call eight 
regional leaders, and those regional leaders will only have to call four people. And in doing that, we can reach over 3,000 people. And, and just have been having a 20 to 30 minute conversation. And so we'll be connecting because that's what we moms do. And we'll be gathering super effective um, and important information. So I'm gonna walk through this process now with you and see, um, we're gonna learn a lot about Anne, okay? And I'm gonna meet other people for now, is that okay? All right, great. And, um, and if you do have something that you wanna say, you wanna wave, you wanna like add in something or just for the time being, maybe write it down and then we can come back to people and have people um, sh uh, share, okay? Usually on these calls, we have people mostly sharing uh, what's going on with them and how they're doing and all of that. But this is a special call. This one is for uh, people who want to reach out and connect with other moms and increase the effectiveness of our movement, which is to create healthy movies, uh, healthy communities across the country. Okay, so here's here's how it's going to go. So uh, let's see. So I'm going to call and say, hi, this is Zen. I'm the Southwest Regional Leader, leader for Moms Across America. Is this Ann Williams? And Ann, you have to talk. You have to say yes so for people to be able to see you. I said um, Okay, so now I can. I have to mute. If you could put yourself on mute on the other end, because every time you, whoops, sorry. Every time you talk, it'll go to you. Okay, so we want to be able to see Ann. No, Ann, you, you need to unmute yourself. Hang on. Ann Williams. Let me see. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, so everybody else should be muted. Okay, and um, so, so, okay, so you've said hello. So hi, Ann. Um, so how, first of all, how are you? I'm great. I'm excited to talk to you. Oh, great, great. Thank you so much. Now, if they're not doing good, empathize with them, okay, and listen to them and acknowledge them, okay? So, and so you're calling, you're saying, I'm calling as part of our new initiative, Divide and Connect, because you know, it's easier um, and well, instead of divide and conquer, we are dividing different parts of the country to make it easier. And because we moms are so good at connecting, I'm calling in part of, as part of this initiative, divide and connect. So today I'd like to connect with you and just ask you five questions. This will take about 20 minutes or more, depending on what you want to say. Does that work for you? I have the time now. You have the time? Okay, great. Awesome. And if not, of course, just find out when is a better time to call. So first of all, I want to say thank you for getting connected with Moms Across America. Can I ask what was going on in your life that had you get involved or connected with Moms Across America when you found us? Well, I, I live in Florida, number one, so we're still having our horrible algae problem. And number two, of course, I found Moms Across America on another Facebook group, which ours was Parents Against Marillax. So I am concerned about other chemicals that are in our environment, but have since found out that polyethylene glycol is also in glyphosate and in Roundup. So there's definitely a connection to all of these chemicals, to everything. Right, so, so Miralax is the same chemical as glyphosate, and also you're very concerned about the, the algae in the environment and the spraying of glyphosate in Florida. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, great. So can I sum that up to say health and environmental issues? Pretty clear assessment of that? that? Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, so let's see. My next question is, how can Moms Across America better empower you? What can we do or what can we offer to you? Wow, I, you've done so much already. So um, that's exciting. Makes me want to cry to know that there are other mothers out there that want to do to do things to to make our world a healthier place for our children. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Yeah. So it is good to connect, isn't it? You're not alone. It is. Awesome. Awesome. Well, so what can we do more of though? Is there something else that we can do more of to support you? Well, I think right now you have a lot of tools accessible. I think probably for me personally, it's finding the time and also finding my own community. So it sounds like what you're looking to do would be a, a very positive thing to find a group uh, in my own community to, to kind of get started. Great. Yeah, that would probably be the most useful thing, right? If you had anywhere from six to 30 ladies in your local area that you could connect with. Yes. And, and I think right now we do from, just from Floridians on the Parents Against Marillax, because really that the causes are so interrelated. 
Yes. Great. Yeah. Isn't that great? Once you connect about one health issue, you can find that you're, you're overlapping and connecting with many other issues as well, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. So you, uh, you, have, you have some community, but you would like us to support you in, in connecting with more community. Does that make yes. sense? Okay. Okay, great. So we have some ways that we might be able to do that. One of them is actually, have you connected with your local Facebook group, your, your Florida Moms Across America group? I have uh, signed up on there, but I haven't done a lot on that group. Yes. Okay. All right. So that might be, that's a big first step. Yes. Okay, great. So that might be one thing to start with. Okay, great. Um, let's see. Now, um, now if they do offer ideas, we want to make sure to acknowledge them. Like if they offer like a new idea, one that we've never thought of before, we want to make sure to acknowledge them that not only that it makes a difference for, for us and our communication, but it could make a difference for thousands or even millions of other people. Right. Yes. So, so I do want to let you know that if you do have any ideas, please do let us know because that could reach us, reach a whole lot of people. Right. We have a, a very good network that's expanding. So, okay, great. Question number three is what works for you about moms across America, or if you would prefer to talk about the health of your family, like health solutions, like what types of supplements or health solutions are you using that work for you? Well, I, I think you're, you're growing with all of your resources. So I, I think as, as time goes by, my needs may change. And also the, the people in my community, just knowing that we have a resource Mm -hmm. that we can trust. Great. So the resource, so like the data page, have you yeah. been to the, the data page? Okay. The science, all of that works for you. Yeah. Okay, great. That's good to know. That's, that's our kind of our pride and joy. <laughs> we really appreciate having the, the scientists and the farmers and the doctors and the lawyers that help us out with getting that information up there. Okay, great. So what, what is working for your family right now? The health of your family? Oh, uh, just trying to eat healthier. Uh, believe it or not, just each time I hear you talk, I am encouraged to buy even more organic, even though I was sort of picky about what I would buy organic. I'm trying harder to buy all organic and just, I am more mindful just with the brief interactions with you. So it really does make a difference. Oh, that's wonderful. And that makes a difference too, when you can connect with other people in your area. Yes. that we're eating organic too, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Very encouraging. Okay, great. So um, eating organic and spreading the word about that, I suppose, helps too, doesn't it? Letting other people know. Okay, great. Um, now in this part, if you're talking to somebody just for people to consider, if somebody says stuff like, you know, it's very nice of you to compliment me and connecting with me, but if people say stuff like, you know, oh, Zen is so great, just please remind them that this is not about me, right? That this is about them. And if they um, name um, that Moms Across America wouldn't exist without all of us, like it wouldn't exist without Ann Williams or Ann Temple or Carol or Ellie or, you know, like all yeah. of them, it wouldn't exist without you guys. So it's about all of us and community all together. Okay. And then if they do mention a supplement, like if somebody says, oh my gosh, my son took this probiotic and his whole life has changed, right? I, we want to know about that because we have a health solutions page and we take referrals from moms. And if somebody raves about a health solution, especially one, if they're not selling it, <laughs> right. Then, um, you know, that if it's really a, a, a true referral, then uh, we really do consider that. So um, please do get the names if you if you volunteer for this to do that. So, okay, question number four. I have here that you indicated that you would like to volunteer for Moms Across America. Is that, is this still true? I can make a lot of phone calls, yes. You can, okay, great, thank you. And so if they say yes, acknowledge them, of course, and if things have changed for them and they say no, just say thank you so much, it's fine, we'll, we'll indicate that, right, on our website, and so you would just communicate back to us that that person says no. Um, but if they say, if um, let's see, I'll make a note. Now, just in case do things do change for you, can I put a B in your bonnet for the future? And if things change for you and you want to volunteer, can you let me know? Right? And so then you say, great. So there, there are different areas that you could volunteer. For instance, we have tasks such as professional support, like PR, marketing, graphic design, video editing or copy editing, like things that professionals have to offer, right? Maybe even nutritional, you know, backgrounds or, uh, you know, health coaching or, you know, anything like that. They might, you might know a blogger, there might be a blogger, right? 
So those types of professional um, experiences or admin support like research and data entry, things that they can do remotely from home or local support like hosting events or legislative outreach where that means getting out and going to talk to people, right? Um, but it also includes things like letter writing. So you could be an introvert and you could still volunteer, right? And just write letters from home too. So that's fine too. So is there a particular area that interests you perhaps? Gosh, you covered a lot of bases then. That's very good. Um, <laughs> yes, actually I lobby in Tallahassee every year, every session. So I oh, could cool. certainly, I could certainly throw this into my lobbying effort. Great. Awesome. And I would also assert that it, you may not uh, need to be the one to do it. You might be a mentor for others, yes. right? Yes. You have done this. You might best contribute your time by having a small group of people and doing a video like I'm doing right now and just coaching other people how to do it. Yes. Great. Okay. Awesome. So I'll, I'll indicate that. And then um, we'll get back to you about those tasks or connect you with you within a few days by email or phone. Okay. And so this has been a really great call for me. I want to say I'm inspired by what you've shared and, um, and what you're, you're excited to, to contribute to Moms Across America. And I'm sure many people will, um, I'm sure it will be important to many people across the nation, especially sharing like your lobbying experience, right? So you've really given some inspiring feedback and ideas and I want to thank you. Is there, is there anything else you'd want to say, you'd like to say or any questions that you have? No, but I think the lobbying aspect is really interesting because I've worked uh, hand in hand with the League of Women Voters, which I think would, they would be very receptive to Moms Across America and also the uh, Florida PTA. So they, again, a great, we've talked about that I think before, but just another great access um, of, of women who are interested in, in bettering our environment, our state and our country. Yeah. That is awesome. The League of Women Voters is one that we're just connecting with uh, this year and we're sending a whole box of free materials. It might be to the one in Florida. I have to double check. We got this email just before the holidays. So we're really excited. I've spoken in front of the League of Women Voters and they voted in favor of GMO labeling or they recommended in favor of GMO labeling. So uh, we're really excited about connecting with them. And if anybody else is on the League of Women Voters and wants to connect you know, with us, we will absolutely send, send them some flyers, okay? Yeah, you should do that because many of them are older women, their families are grown, but they very much care about the environment. And actually we, Dr. Paula Montgomery is in charge of our League of Women Voters in, in Pensacola. So I wouldn't be surprised. She's very interested in the health of, of everyone, so. Okay. Great. Very exciting idea. Okay. So the last question will help us to fulfill on our new expanded mission, which I shared with you earlier, Moms Across America exists to educate and inspire mothers and others to transform the food industry and environment, creating healthy communities together. And to do this, all we need to do is to reach out and educate each other. And from learning about each other, we'll be inspired just like you did for me, right? Like other people on the call, weren't you inspired to hear that she's been lobbying in Florida? So great, right? So are you interested in making this same call to four to eight other people in your state area to be a part of our divide and connect phone tree? Yes, that would be you good. Are? Yay, awesome, okay. So if no, say that's totally great, we appreciate it. And if you think of anybody that might want to be, you know, please do connect us and, and acknowledge them. And, um, and also let them know that this will be confidential contact information and only for the use of Moms Across America, okay? Not for like um, multi-level marketing and stuff like that. Um, but you, you know, of course to connect. And then um, if yes, they'll be a part of the divide and connect phone tree and we'll send you a link uh, to add in your notes to the people's responses. So there'll be a Google Doc list, right? And you'll be able to add in uh, people's responses. And I think we'll probably just keep it confidential by doing first name and last initial or something like that. We still have to work some things out. And then, so I would double check your email address, address and, um, and I would say thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. You're so awesome. Can I give you my number so you can call me if you want and we can stay in touch, right? We would connect and exchange phone numbers and then um, end the call. And so just to give you the numbers again, with one person, right, I'll be leading a call with the 12 regional leaders, there'll be two per area, and then those 12 regional, regional leaders will each call eight st state volunteers, so that's two total um, per state, right, they have buddies, so then that would be 96 people that we would have reached, 
And then those two state volunteers each call eight state volunteers. Um, that's 16 total per state. That's 768 people total. And, um, and if we don't have that many in the database, like let's just, let's just say for instance, in a certain area of Connecticut, you know, the Northwest or maybe Montana, right? We only have one person. Then what the person that I did this with, Isabel, who's on the call, she said, do you want me to call my friends and family? And I was like, oh, I didn't think of that. We could, we could contact people outside of the Moms Across America network too, right? And we could ask some of the same questions. How can we help you? What are you dealing with? What are the health issues you're dealing with? What are the solutions that you're, you know, that you have? And we could get some really valuable information that could support other moms. Um, and then finally, the 16 state area volunteers call for local volunteers friends or family. So that's um, 64 per state with a total of 3,264 um, people nationwide. Pretty awesome, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So we, so if you want to unmute yourself and if you have any comments or questions, we'd love to hear from you. Great job, Anne. Also in anybody have any comments or questions? No? Isabel, I did this call with you. Did you want to say anything else? No, no, that was very nice. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, one thing that I, I want to say that Isabel and I talked about was a lot of different um, brands of supplements. And, um, and she also um, put a bee in my bonnet by saying that, you know, some people don't want to use supplements, right? And they do primarily get their um, health remedies through food. So I think we can be more conscientious as an organization to, to make sure to say we encourage, first of all, whole organic foods as your solution, right? First and foremost, local whole organic foods and herbs and, you know, like that. And um, if that's not working for you or if you need something in transition to your health, because the, the goal is not to be on supplements for the rest of your life, whether they're, you know, Western med medicines or natural supplements, right? That's not the goal. That's not what we're interested in. That's not why we have a health solution store. It's simply to transition you to a state where you are getting your, all your vitamins and minerals through a, a whole, mostly plant-based, I would urge you, um, you know, organic, whole food, seasonal, local diet. So um, we do want to make sure that that message comes across loud and clear that we're better at communicating that. And did you want to unmute? And but also, all, yeah, also we need, you know, sometimes we need to explain to them that first of all, if they're not doing organic and um, specifically with farming practices these days, that sometimes the nutrition is not up to par as it was in the past. So they might not be getting everything they need from their food. Right? Well, yes, yeah, it's so. um, almost, you, you, you almost can't say might. It's like, like definite, <laughs> you're not. I have seen samples of food tested, you know, organic, conventional, biodynamic, you know, all different kinds. Um, and, and uh, uh, sorry, what do you call it? Hydroponic. And the farmer that looked at a 50 year plant pathologist, Dr. Don Huber said, the minerals in these food samples is abysmal. Like he said, I would be embarrassed to call that food if it came from my farm. All of them, cross eat for organic. So that's why we do urge people to take mineral supplements and vitamins. And um, it, it is important to consider that. And I know in countries like Hiroshi, I know like out in Japan, I've had a very difficult time with talking to people about supplements in Japan because they just don't, and for the most part, a lot of people don't believe in them. And, and I think that comes from thousands of years of actually getting your nutrition from your food, like you're supposed to. But, um, you know, the, things have changed now, especially in America with the industrial agriculture. Uh, and and uh, it really is something to consider. Something that I'm, I just learned about, oh, darn it, I don't have the book in front of me. But I'm reading the book called The Secret Life of Plants. And one I'll thing that I, it. oh, you have it. Okay, great. Has anybody else read this book? No, it came out in 1973. It's as old as I am, but for some reason I just discovered it because of, of, of one of our supporters email, uh, mailed it to me for Christmas. And it is a mind blowing book. In the first nine pages, your mind will be blown about what plants can do and how they can actually perceive energy 
from you and respond to it. And there, there it is. Okay. Hold it closer to the, well, wait, you, you have to say something. So it holds, so the screen is big. Oh, and, okay. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Can you see it? Do you see it? I'm only seeing, well, I see you, Zen. I don't see the book, but there it is. I haven't read it yet, but I'm very excited, at least, especially for the first nine pages. Great. Okay. So, so. One of, one, yeah. So one of the things that I've learned later on, I'm about three quarters of the way through the book that I just read yesterday, was that there were some scientists, and I don't remember their names right now, but there were some scientists that discovered earlier, you know, long time ago, maybe even in the, the, the late, uh, early 1900s, late, you know, late 1800s, when they started uh, messing around with fertilizers is that synthetic fertilizers disrupt the soil in such a way that the plants don't produce the minerals that they need, like manganese, I'm sorry, magnesium. And when the animals eat plants that are deficient of magnesium, they get birth defects. So it's not just the glyphosate that's chelating, right? These vital minerals and nutrients, which it does, glyphosate, uh, holds on to and makes those vitamins and minerals not absorbable, right? For anything, living thing it touches. But on top of that, we are using so many synthetic fertilizers that they are actually disrupting the plant's ability to produce or to hold or to harness the magnesium. Also vitamin D. And who doesn't have a vitamin D deficiency right now? Like we all do, right? And so um, that was really fascinating to me to learn that these synthetic fertilizers are a really big part of the uh, lack of vitamins and minerals in our bodies as well, that it's not just glyphosate. So we, we really do need to urge our farmers to go to uh, biodynamic and regenerative agriculture because those types of synthetic fertilizers are not, not used, they're not utilized. Um, some organic farmers may still use, you know, synthetic fertilizers that are approved or whatever. Um, the other thing about those fertilizers that can be used in organic is that they can have manure from GMO fed animals, which is to completely defeats the point, right? So then you are now getting toxins and, and GMOs, you know, into that organic crop uh, because the, 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 the restrictions are not strict enough. So a uh, really important part to learn. But Anyway, let me tell you something else about the first nine pages of this book, The Secret Life of Plants. It's so cool. So this guy did put, hooked up a lie detector test to a plant just to like detect the energy levels, right? Everybody knows everything's made of energy, right? And, and so he thought, how can I evoke a reaction out of this plant? And what he did was he thought of burning it, like lighting a match and burning it. And what he noticed was that when he thought of lighting a match and burning it, that's when the plant reacted. Not when he pretended to do it and very in a smaller amount when he did do it, but when he thought of it, when that picture was in his brain of, of lighting the, the plant's leaf on fire, the plant's energy level went spiked. And so what he deduced out of many, many, many different science, you know, many different um, testing, many different kinds of plants, the ones with the most amount of water in it, had the highest reaction, which makes sense, right? Water carries energy. That um, not just plants, but living things sense they can receive your energy of what you're thinking. And this is really important to consider when you're doing your vision boards, which I hope you're doing for the new year for what you want to create this year, because what you envision and put out in the world is what you will create and what will come to you and what we will create as a movement. So this is why I'm asking you to envision a completely regenerative agriculture, you know, world with, without toxic chemicals, with no GMOs. Okay, so don't even think about those, right? Just think organic, regenerative agriculture, healthy people, all of that. Just keep focusing on that. And that is what will come back to you and come back to all of us. So we need to focus on the solutions and creating healthy communities, creating healthy families, right? And what are the steps that we need to take to do that? Um, you know, and it really is, he, 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 he pointed out that these plants um, did things like they reacted, like if they killed a bunch of shrimp in the room, they reacted to that other life form dying, right? They sensed it and they knew what was going on and they reacted to it. Um, <laughs> 
they also reacted when somebody came in, there were six people, and um, one of the people, an identified person, killed the, a, a second plant in the room, stomped on it and crushed it and killed it. And then when they had a lineup and that, those people individually came in front of that, that witness plant, the witness plant identified the killer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, whoa, right? And there's, there's just so much in this book. And, and they, they talk about, I mean, playing music to plants and how playing music to plants helps them grow. I mean, in one t study, this guy played Mozart to a wheat field and increased their crop yield by 60%. You can't, yeah. Wasn't there, a, Zen, wasn't there something, an article where they, they did it at a school and they had the kids yell and be mean to one plant and then they had them be nice to another plant and then how they grew, how differently they grew? I just saw, I just read that article. They did it at a high school probably came from this book because there was a person who did that in this book. She focused on, she pulled two leaves off of actually, pulled the leaves off of a plant. And one leaf, she talked to every morning and said, grow, thrive, you know, be alive, right? And the other leaf, she just left in a room, totally ignored it. And that the leaf that she ignored within two weeks was dry and dead as you would expect a leaf to be. And the leaf that she willed to live every morning and talked to every morning was still green and vibrant two or three months later. <laughs> Did nothing else do it. It's just energy that we give. So this is, this is one, one reason why I urge everybody to really focus on where you put your energy. If you are giving your energy to trolls and arguing with them, you are not only allowing them to suck your time up, right? And to waste your time. But you're, 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 you're imagining all these terrible things that they're envisioning, right? The, the lies and the deception and the, like you're letting that into your psyche. So I, I really urge you when you see something, just walk on by, <laughs> just be like, this is not the person you're looking for to have this conversation with. That's not me, right? Just move on and go to somebody else and have a conversation about the solutions instead. You know, I mean, I see these, some of these things where people are having an argument and I'm wondering during this time that they had this argument, how many representatives could they have reached out to, right? Uh, you're you know? exactly right, Zen. <laughs> so many, there are so many people who want to listen to what we have to say. Well, it's just absolutely a waste of time. We can direct our energy in a much more positive way. Yes, yes. And good point. This guy worked with plants that responded to him, that had more water in it, right? He didn't work so much with the plants that didn't respond to him. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, there was, there was one other instance too, where there was a psychologist that came to visit to see his work. And this, per the plants were not reacting. And he was like, what's going on? He tried one plant and then a second plant. It wasn't until like the fifth or sixth plant where he actually got a reaction from them. And he turned to the guy and asked, by any chance, does your work involve harming plants? He's like, oh yeah, every day I take plants and I incinerate them and I weigh the matter of the plants. And like, so what he was, you know, taking out of that was that these plants were like sense that this guy, this dude kills plants. And so they were protecting themselves. Right. And they didn't, they didn't respond. So we also, you know, um, people around us will, will not respond to us if they sense that we are a threat. And if we make them wrong, if we tell them to wake up or, you know, insinuate that they're, they're uh, somehow a part of the problem and, you know, insinuate that they're, they're, uh, you know, trying to pull the wool over other people's eyes. Like if we insinuate that they're wrong in any way, they will perceive us as a threat. So they won't respond, to, they won't be responsive, right? They'll try to be protective and they'll like, like the plants, well, they, what they did was they like played dead, you know, like we're not gonna respond to you. So we don't, we don't wanna, we don't wanna evoke that type of response. We want people to respond to us. We wanna make them feel good. We want to hear them and to listen to them and acknowledge them. And uh, I probably didn't do that enough with Anne when we did our mock call, but you know, really acknowledge them for, for volunteering, for being involved, for being a great mom. Like she didn't complain enough. If she had complained enough, I wouldn't be able to acknowledge her more, <laughs> right? But so if somebody says to you like, I'm exhausted, I don't know what to do with my kids and I don't know if I have time for this or that or the other thing, what you wanna do is hear inside that what they're committed to. So what I would hear is, I hear that you're committed to being a great mom. 
And that it really is incredible that despite all of those issues with your two kids with autism and your one kid with autoimmune issues, that you're still willing to volunteer for Moms Across America. That's amazing. That's what's going to have us be successful. That's being unstoppable, right? You want to get them present to how awesome they are, not just the problems that they have. And, and that's what has people re-energized, is being acknowledged, seeing not only their greatness, but other people's greatness. And so I really, I, I urge you to try that. When somebody's complaining about something, look for what's underneath. Like, what are they really saying? What they're really saying is, I don't like the way things are right now because I have a greater commitment. I want integrity in our government, right? I want, I'm committed to health. I'm committed to freedom. I'm committed to justice, you know? And that takes an extraordinary person. I mentioned to Isabel when we were talking, because she was talking about how rough it is out there. There's some really negative stuff going on, right? Really daunting negative things. And, I, and she mentioned how upset she was about it. And I said, well, it is the people that are most, that are the most affected that are the most effective. So if you have had a child that almost died, if you yourself has have, have had serious health issues, I would assert that you are the person that is going to the, be the most effective in speaking up about that and making a difference for other people. So please do consider if, if this is really impacting you, if you feel depressed, if you feel down, if there's ever a time when you feel like you can't go on, you're the, you're, being greatly impacted by what's going on because you care so much and because you've been affected and because you know and you're willing to know. There are a lot of people who couldn't give a rat's patootie about what's going on and they're not gonna be effective in making a difference with other people, right? So, but you do, you care. And, and so you are gonna be the one to make the greatest difference, I would say. Kelly has joined us, Kelly Ryerson, who is the glyphosate girl I don't know if she can hey. turn her video on. Hi, Kelly. Yeah, I don't have video right now, <laughs> but I'm here. I have some audio. <laughs> okay, great. Kelly, <laughs> I just you. want to introduce, oh. Go ahead. Oh, hi, Kelly. This is Ariana Victor. We never met in person, but I was- Oh, hey. Yes. Oh, yeah, awesome. <laughs> awesome. Ariana is making a movie about this whole debacle. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Funny. Yes. That's awesome. So needed. Yes. <laughs> And Kelly Ryerson is a key player in the whole Monsanto glyphosate, uh, you know, trial because she tracked it every day for oh. seven hours, seven weeks for eight hours, probably some six hours. Yeah. Now yes. I can't believe it. I don't know how I squeezed it in actually. <laughs> you didn't, you made it a priority girl. You said, I'm doing this. And, True. And so, and this, this is another great example I want to point out. So Kelly lives in this, the Bay area. And, um, you know, happened to be able to make the time to go to the um, San Francisco courthouse and to sit there every day for seven weeks and write about what was going on because she noticed that not many people could do that, right? There were the lawyers there, there were a few media people, but there were not many other people. And she also knew how important this was. So she found a way to contribute that was really unique to her. And she did a fabulous job. And oh, as, thank you. yeah, please do look at her website called Glyphosate Girl if you can. Okay. And Kelly, while you're on, do, are there any, do you have any updates on what's going on with the, the case in, um, is it Missouri is being tried next or there's another one in San Francisco happening soon? So, can you tell yeah, us? The next case is going to be the federal trial in San Francisco. Um, and just like in the state trial and the Johnson trial, it looks like this is going to be a similar situation <laughs> where the judge does not appear to be on our side and Brent Wisner pointed out during a, um, uh, one of the hearings on, I guess it was January 4th, that it's like, it's almost like they're too big to fail, like to be questioned. And so now, I don't know if you guys are aware, but they're bifurcating the trial. So meaning that instead of having the plaintiffs be able to introduce um, evidence of the corruption and all the you know secrecy behind the scenes um, within internal Monsanto, now it's going to be separated out. So first, it can only be scientists presenting the science of glyphosate. And then if it's determined at that point, the jury says, yes, it's very clear that glyphosate can cause non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, only then can they talk about things like IARC also thinks that 
you know, it causes cancer and all these emails that are clearly showing just the horrible, disgusting behavior. So it's really just what you were just saying about feeling really depressed about it. I mean, I, it's like this issue can't catch a break. It's very strange. So it'll be interesting to see. I don't think, I think Brent Wisner is going to be trying the, um, the trial that is going to start in March. That's going to be led by Baum Headland. And that one's going to be in Oakland. And then I don't, I'm not positive if they've, I know um, Amy Wagstaff and I think maybe someone from the Miller firm are going to be doing the federal trial, which is up first. So that's in mid-February. Okay. So fe the federal trial is in San Francisco. Right. Can you, can you create the distinction for us between the impact of the federal trial versus the Missouri trial? What's going on in Missouri? Okay. So the Missouri trial, I think, will be very similar. It's a state trial, but just under Missouri laws. And so that will be similar to the Johnson trial, just in that it's all run at a state level. The federal trial um, is, isn't necessarily any more important. It's just been handled a little differently with all the pretrial things. And, um, and so they, that's why Judge Chabria has collected all of the federal cases just in San Francisco. I mean, in San Francisco, but from around the country, then once these bellwether trials take place and they kind of decide a good method, then he'll disperse these, um, these plaintiffs back to their individual states for their local federal trial, <laughs> but not the state level trial. So you have these, um, the trials have been, or the cases have been filed at both the federal and the state level. And there's not necessarily, it seems to me, an obvious reason why one would have been filed one place versus another. So I think they're all equally impactful and we'll just see what happens. But you don't know the difference between them, just that they were filed in different places. Right, right. Okay. But one doesn't have um, set a greater precedence over the other. No, I don't, I don't think so. You would think maybe the federal would, but I'm not positive that that's true because it seems that Johnson may end up being the most influential, in, in my opinion, just getting things rolling. That was brilliant that Johnson went first. Yes. So fantastic. I mean, I, my personal wish is that Brent would also be doing the federal one since it's the first one. Um, Cause he's just such an amazing debater. I mean, and that's sort of what's needed, but yeah. I think that, you know, then it just comes down to which law firms got, you know, their client first or whatever, and that's who gets to be trying it. Yeah. Kelly, I have to ask, has this made you interested in being a lawyer? No. <laughs> no. No, really? You should go be a lawyer, though. <laughs> I have I have been daydreaming about going to law school because you man, should. Oh my gosh! And not just a lawyer, but one day, like when I'm 80, like a judge that can overturn presidential. Oh laws. boy, <laughs> isn't that true? <laughs> because they, and, they have you the know, power. they do. They have the power to do that. <laughs> yeah, they totally do. They, do. do they? Do do we know what the background is in these lawyers? If he's got conflict of interest, I don't know. Um, you or the look, judge. I don't have a good. I don't have. Well, I don't have. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Does Vince um, Chabria? Oh, Chabria yeah. How you pronounce it? Yeah. Yeah. Do we know what his background is? Because I don't know. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm uh, being judgmental. But anybody named Vince, I don't get a good feeling about. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can look up the judges, and they do have like on, on different law uh, lawyer websites like backgrounds on judges so that the, the the prosecutors and all that can get sort of a feel of who they are. They do say things like, like this judge has voted in favor of, you know, corporations more than, you know, not or like actually for what, what was her name? Boliano? The, uh, the judge. Suzanne Bolanos. Bolanos. Yeah. The judge for the Johnson case. They actually said that she has a very steep learning curve. Like, like she might not get the science for, in other words, for a long time. And that's what we saw. Like we saw that, I mean, they talked for seven, you know, a whole week actually about one particular topic. And by the end of the um, case, she still didn't understand that. Like, you know, like for instance, that they don't, that they don't test the final formulation for approval. They only test one declared active chemical ingredient in the formulation and she still wasn't getting that. She didn't understand that after all those weeks. Oh my gosh. That was so frustrating. It was insane. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the science, I mean, the science is on our side. Yes. But I'm still very nervous. 
I feel really good this too. And, and, so. and it's a very good point. It's because this, there is science on their side that they have paid for and that they have ghostwritten. And mm -hmm. that is what is very important, especially um, Hiroshi is on here from Japan. You know, for other countries, we have to have people translate the science into, you know, other languages that's from the independent scientists. Not the yes. science from, that's from the universities that Monsanto and Down DuPont have funded. So um, it's really, man, if you have kids that are thinking about what to do, have them learn other languages. I have, I have to say going to, I went to Korea and Japan this year and I've been to you know, China and many other countries. Without people learning a, another language, we have no bridges to these other countries. We have no way to connect and to keep our kids healthy. And this is essential because the food we're selling is going to Japan and Korea and China, all these other countries. It is a global food system. So we need to be able to talk about this and share what's going on. And, and the, and people from other countries need to have the science from the independent, um, you know, scientists. And, and so it's, I can't thank the translators enough that did simultaneous translation for me, you know, in Japan. And I spoke in front of Congress, the Congress building, they call it's the national diet building. And I actually thought it was like diet as a nutrition, <laughs> but no, that means Congress. And I found out, I was like, Oh, wow. <laughs> be in the Congress building. And so there were 150 people and there were seven different representatives and, and, um, and senators and like really, you know, con city council people, all kinds of, um, politicians and there were uh, several different media outlets and there were you, there were farmers and there were scientists that runs lab that run labs and there were groups their moms like heads of groups you know like there's one woman that's running the vaccine movement in japan another woman that's running a healthy schools movement you know it was so it was so exciting to connect with these lovely people and the only way we could connect is with a translator right or if they knew some english so man, it's just so important to learn another language. Really, really important. Okay. That's exciting to hear there's that enthusiasm there too. Oh yeah, it's happening. And so they're testing for, you missed this, Kelly, we mentioned earlier, they are testing for glyphosate in Japan. We tested three Japanese snacks. Two of them were positive and they were shocked to hear, to see which ones the, you know, the wasabi peas? Mm -hmm. the green yeah. Wasabi peas were, were 6.5 parts per billion and the wheat snacks were 14.5 parts per billion. Um, the, um, the, uh, the corn snacks did were not positive. And when I talked to the scientists about that, they said they think the, because they had corn um, corn snack with uh, corn oil over them, there was like chocolate, you know, you know, corn syrup and all that kind of stuff in it. And they said they believe that the glyphosate's not staying and they're not finding it in the oils. Because glyphosate is water soluble. So it goes by way of the oil. I mean, sorry, the water, the glyphosate goes by way of the water and then the oil goes in the other direction, right? And so they're not finding the glyphosate in the oils. Now that doesn't mean that the oh. GMO, GMOs aren't in the oils, right? Right. Uh, so, and also corn is not typically as high because they spray it earlier in the growing season. You know, they spray the weeds when the, when the corn is low, they spray the weeds, mm -hmm. but they don't necessarily spray throughout the growing season and they don't necessarily spray to fly it at the end right? Because it's got a husk and it just dries whatever they do with it. So, but, but wheat and barley and peas and legumes and all of that, they do spray just before harvest. So there's going to be oh, much wow. levels of glyphosate. Yeah. And so the flour that was tested there had the majority, it had over 1.1 1 .1 part per billion of glyphosate, the majority of their flour. And so they're doing a lot more testing now. And, um, and there was a guy that I met that was a representative and really good story. And I'll let you guys talk a little bit more before we finish right after the story. So the representative, um, his wife is an author and she wrote a best-selling novel. She sold 150,000 copies, um, within two weeks, just before, you know, a couple weeks just before I got there. And the last chapter was devoted to moms across America. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's yeah. so awesome. Yes. And her book is called Japan being, uh, sold. Wow. And previous book about GMOs sold 700,000 copies. And so, um, and she gets them translated into Korean and Chinese and, you know, Japanese as well. So I'm really excited that, uh, you know, we've made that connection and hopefully I mean, maybe her publisher, I don't know, maybe somebody, you know, another big publisher will publish my book. It's being translated right now into Japanese. Oh, anyway, good. Yes. Yes. So she, so her husband is a representative 
And he got to be that way because when he was 19, he had a blood disease. I'm forgetting the name of it. What's a blood, um, begins with an H. Anyway, he had a blood disease. Hemophilia. hemophilia. Yes, he had hemophilia and he took a med Western medicine for it. And the Western medicine poisoned him so much he almost died. And in fact, it did kill uh, friends of his. And it, it was very, very toxic. And so he- A and Bayer product. Bayer product. Probably, yes. And, and so he and three other, uh, sorry, 3,000 people formed a circle around the Congress building and they protested. And what they put forth was, and I think this, this was brilliant, was a bill to, that required them in Japan to do a screening for safety testing in Japan before they allowed medicines to be allowed to the Japanese public, not to just trust what the Western studies said, right? The manufacturers said that they had to trust, I mean, sorry, they had to test in Japan and go through a screening process. So that happened. He made that pass when he was 19 years old for all the prescriptions in Japan. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yes. And so he became, you know, involved in politics. And now the bill that he's putting forth is one that, um, I don't remember all the details of it now, but it's about pesticides and water and, you know, um, the, the final regulations and neonicotinoids and, you know, all of that, that it, it has to be the final formulation and, you know, all that stuff. So they've got the right people on board there. And Japan, I, I really have a lot of faith that they're going to make a huge uh, difference in the food supply. So very exciting. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Anything, anybody else have anything they want to share? Max or Ellie, Isabel, anybody you have anything you want to share? Anything going on with you? No? Any questions? I am, uh, I'm, oh, I'm getting ready to, we're getting ready for our food, the food, our food, food care screening at the beginning of February. So very excited. You're going to love it, Anne. That movie's going to change everything. It's such a great movie. And yeah. Dr. Terry Mason, who's actually in the movie, is coming up from Chicago. So he's going to come up and be one of the moderators. So Wonderful. we're excited. Wonderful. That movie, The Food Cure, has a... Oh, yes, Ariana, want to say something? Oh, no, go ahead, and you can talk about The Food, food Cure, but I was just going to share some information that I heard this morning. Go ahead, no, please, so go ahead. This morning, I had a Skype call with a, a scientist who's actually out in London, and he's working on a couple of studies going on at the King's College, and it's been four years that him and his collaborators have been ongoing collecting all this data, and he said 2019 is really exciting because it's the first time that they are finally getting the results of these four years of collaborations. And one thing that I found very, very exciting, and we're gonna hope, I'm hoping to connect with the twins, but they've been working with human twins all over the UK, and they've been studying the difference between pairs of twins where one twin eats organic and the other eats non-organic. I think it's just a lifestyle thing. And so they're collecting the microbiome data and then looking in other ways to lab animals. And they've also replicated the human digestive tract from mouth to bottom. And they are looking at the effects of Roundup and then the effects of glyphosate on the human microbiome and what it's doing. And so that I think is fascinating and I can't wait to continue connecting with them and feature that in the film. Um, and then I actually had a question. Is it okay if I put it out about something that we're searching for in the documentary? Please do, yeah. So whether you know someone or anyone that's on this call today, one thing that we are looking to feature in this film is a parent and their child who's going through a current health journey. Um, particularly one thing that I think is so important is showing the autism. It can be drastically improved, if not sometimes even reversed by healing the gut and getting on an organic diet. I've heard so many stories from different doctors like Dr. Michelle Perro or Dr. Natasha Campbell. Um, but when you tell the regular person every day about this, they don't believe it. And it's one of those things you kind of need to show as opposed to just tell. And so if anyone has, knows anyone in their life currently. You're, you're, you cut out a little bit. If anybody knows anyone in their life that's currently dealing with autism, has a child dealing with autism, that's what, you, that's what you'd like to connect with, right? We lost her, I think. That's what she said, right? Yeah. So if you know anybody, um, uh, you Ooh. can e you can email. Oh, there she is. Okay. Yeah, Ariana, what's your what's your email? We lost you for a little bit. 
Oh yeah, sorry about that. I don't know where you lost me at, but let me type it in the chat for you. Yeah. So if yeah. you know anyone, if you know anyone with a child with autism that they're dealing with it right now, that's what you asked for, right? Yes, and that family would be willing to film the health journey that they go on if they're willing to make those changes. Right. Okay. Going, healing the gut, and I know in our group we have several uh, several parents of autistic children, mm -hmm. but they're seeing dramatic uh, improvements in their children after they stop the Marillax. I mean, within, we have a, a mother right now with a 19 year old who's had autism since he, since his 15 month old vaccines. Wow. And, um, he stopped Marillax in October. They, he was so violent. They had to move him into a group home. As a matter of fact, a video of this young man is on the children's health fund, the Robert Kennedy health fund. I, I might send that to you because it's rather interesting. And we, we I, I know I've sent, I'm not real big into how the polyethylene glycol and the glyphosate, but I have sent Zen information in the past. So I need to look that up because polyethylene mm -hmm. glycol is an excipient and it's used for the Roundup to be sprayed. So it sticks onto things. So mm -hmm. um, it's, it's really interesting, but this young man has not had one violent episode. I spent an hour with the mother in three months since the Marillax was stopped. And wow. Um, it's it's really incredible. The stories are incredible, and a lot of these mothers, of course, and we have another mom uh, not too far away, who her son's brain tumor at 16 he was suicidal, and he stopped Marilax. I spent a lot of time with her. She has him on all organics, um, mineral supplementation, a lot of different things, and the the doctor, the pediatric neuro neurologist in uh, Orlando said, I don't know what you're doing, but but keep doing it because his his brain tumor is shrinking. It's not growing, it's shrinking. So there's some pretty incredible stories about how medication, the same that's in the glyphosate is causing problems. Sorry, I didn't mean to go on so long. No, that's fascinating. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, it's just, it just shows another example of how these chemicals that our children are being exposed to are um, synergistic. You know, they, they work together. They impact, they're, they work together to impact our children in many different ways. And so, you know, I'm sure we'll find out more over time, but they, somebody, people need to test for that. It's called, what, what's it called? Poly, poly, uh, what is it called? Oh, polyethylene glycol. Ethylene glycol is antifreeze. Over-the-counter Miralax is called polyethylene glycol. It, it, the short term is PEG, capital P-E-G, PEG. Okay, P-E-G. So if you see P-E-G in a, in a medicine or a product, that's mm -hmm. polyethylene. Like now, not all of your medicine cabinets, if we even have medicine cabinets anymore, but most people can go in and find at least 10 items in their medicine cabinet that have PEG in them. Yes. And, and Ariana, I even, I even read, I even read somewhere that, well, they use polyethylene glycol as a dough conditioner in some of the mass produced bread. Yes. It's, it's, it's in uh, shredded coconut and you have to buy the organic, well, it's propylene glycol, which is very similar, but it's, it's in a lot of our food, shampoos, uh, everything. It's what's in e-cigs these days too, propylene gly glycol. It's what? In e-cigarettes, electronic cigarettes. Oh, yes. That's, that's probably, I, I knew immediately when they came out with that and the vaping. It's, it does, it's in all of the asthma inhalers also. It's, um, it's going, we're putting this petrochemical into our lungs when our kids are taking, you know, albuterol inhalers, a rescue inhaler when they can't breathe. We're adding a chemical on top of a damage, you know, damage already there. So we're, we're in a bad way, but, but on a night, a bright side, Stewart, Florida, uh, out, they ruled out gly glyphosate roundups not allowed in their, in their city, which is awesome. We're, that's just one big step for mankind. Yes, yeah, Stuart, Florida. We want to acknowledge Julie down there. She's a neuroscientist that worked on that along with some other people and, and um, so exciting. And they, they had Howard Bligger down there to speak and working on that for a while. So, you know, one of our moms was instrumental in that. So we really appreciate Julie. I'm sorry she couldn't be on the call tonight. But did, did you work on that too, Ann? I did not, but I, I know I have friends in Stuart and everyone's very excited. So great. It's, it's just, that's like the crack. That's the little crack that we needed to just break it wide open. Yep, that's that's what happens here it was Irvine for the school district, you know, and then uh, other school districts around came with it and 
So you can do it too. We've identified over 200 locations now across the country and, and some around the world. They're on our toxin-free zone map. If you go to momsacrossamerica.org and click on um, action, you can see our toxin-free zone map and you can see the areas that have um, either severely restricted or banned the use of glyphosate. So we're really excited that a lot of progress is being made by many different great groups. Um, Non-Toxic Communities has a new website out, revamped their website, very, very good. That's headed up by Kathleen Hawal and some other people that she's working with. And uh, Non-Toxic Irvine, I think they're gonna be called Non-Toxic Neighborhoods, also has a good website. They've partnered with Beyond Pesticides and uh, many other groups as well. We're, we have a call um, this week with some five moms who have gotten glyphosate out of their towns with some organizations. So these organizations wanna know how they did it and then they're gonna help share that information with their people and they all reach hundreds of thousands of people. So I'm excited that these organizations are coming together to uh, work on this issue and, and it's all happening, it's all coming together. There's good stuff happening. Hi, Michelle, where are you from? Hi, um, I'm from Camarillo, California. Okay, great. We are just about to complete, but is there anything oh, that you darn. want to share? <laughs> Usually it's called at five, sorry. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. No, 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 I'm good. I just was um, listening to your live call on, on Facebook, and then I was trying to connect shortly after, but I couldn't find the call, the link, so oh. here I am. <laughs> it's okay. What, 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 had, what had you find out about Moms Across America? And Well, and actually, it, um, I was part of a march against Monsanto years ago, and I met a lady who was part of Moms, Moms Across America, and we just connected, and she told me about, you know, the community, and it was great to just connect with other like-minded people, and what kind of fascinated me, I don't know if it was through her, she told me, or I think through, through your Facebook page, that there was a lady that had created a GMO-free community with the restaurants, because it's so hard to find these restaurants that don't, you know, that obviously are GMO free. And I think it was, gosh, what was the name of the county? But I wanted to find more information about that too. And so that's how I connected and here I am. Oh, cool. Great. Yeah, yeah. there are more and more restaurants that are going GMO free and organic. There's a restaurant called Sunset in Granada. I did a video with the chef. It's on YouTube. Okay. And uh, his name is Patrick Stark, I believe. And he said that within one, a year later from of the same week, you know, the same calendar week, a year later by going about 90% GMO free and organic, his sales went up $10,000 a week. I believe it. So believe it. you can really encourage your restaurant owners to go uh, GMO free and organic and more and more are. Now on the flip side, it is not good that the impossible burger is mm -hmm. now being sold in restaurants. Very mm -hmm. interesting to me that they are going for restaurants first because we don't see any labels in restaurants. Mm -hmm. There's, there's yeah. no, nobody even asks where most of the time where the food comes from. So right. I think the food industry is really being sneaky and uh, you know uh, uh, brilliantly marketing their food that way, uh, but to the detriment of all the people who are eating it, because these Impossible Burger does contain GMO soy components that have mm -hmm. never been approved for human consumption before. Wow. Um, and so they have squeaked this by the FDA, and we don't know what the ramifications could be of this. In fact, there have been people that reported terrible allergic reactions. And so, you know, you just, you cannot you cannot just sit down in a restaurant and eat whatever's there anymore without putting yourself at risk. It really is. I saw a 60 year old man in Oregon when I was wearing my GMO, we're not buying it shirt. Those of you who read my book, you'll know this. It's in the, it's in the book. He, he said, I'm trying to read your shirt. And I said, it says GMO, we're not buying it. Do you know about GMOs? And he said, yes, I can't go to a restaurant without my EpiPen because I might go into anaphylactic shock. Oh, wow. He's like a 65 year old man, grown That's big scary. dude, you know, like, that's scary. like food could kill him in a restaurant, you know, totally. Wow. So please do, um, you know, if you feel moved to speak to your restaurant owners, all it is is mm -hmm. conversation. It's not scary. Mm -hmm. It's just, Hey, do you know about GMOs? Are you looking at serving GMO free oil? Or are you looking at, um, you know, organic? Cause you could charge more and you could make a heck of a lot more money. You mm -hmm. can give that and people are looking for it. I was just at a, the farmer's market again, uh, promoting the March against Monsanto and talking to people. And they're like, well, where can we go eat around here besides Sharkies? It's like, you, you want to have more of a selection. So, so yes. people are looking, people are definitely looking, but yeah, I yeah. appreciate all your work and definitely a supporter. Yes. So I definitely want to grow the community out here, especially being a stay at home mom. And I've got two children. 
So looking to get the word out there more, more um, aggressively this year. Great. So have you signed up to be a volunteer on our website? I have not. I definitely want to do that. So everybody sign up to be a volunteer because very soon we're getting together this whole campaign together that I just went over. You missed it, but it's called divide and connect. And instead of, okay. you know, we're going to divide it up into states and regions and all that. And we're just going to call each other. So it's perfect. We're easy and fun. And, but you won't get notified about it unless you signed up to be a volunteer. So okay, give awesome. a little time to work out the kinks on that. Cause there's confidentiality, you know, with information and all that, but we will, um, we're going to be connecting with people. But if you're interested in doing that, please click, click, um, volunteer or maybe even state leader, you know, there, I think there's different options there and, okay. uh, let us know that if you want to get involved. Okay. So I, thank you. Hey, hey, this is hey, hey Zen. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. And, oh, I, I just wanted to go back a little bit. Um, when we were talking about the polyethylene glycol being and, um, everything, um, I spent about an hour last weekend and this is three ingredients sodium hydroxide, which is lye, water, and coconut oil. And I made these bars of shampoo and they suds up so unbelievably. And this will probably $4 worth of product will probably last me over a year. And this is, this is the type of stuff people could do so easily. Three ingredients. And it's basically saponified coconut oil. And it's, I couldn't believe how it suds up in the shower and made great shampoo. So Gosh. This is, you know, we should, we might have to start doing some videos about how people can make this stuff because it was so easy. Yeah. Can you post a link to the recipe and stuff like that? That'd be great. Yeah. That's so. great. Okay, good job. And, you know yeah. me, I like to make everything from scratch. Well, basically, if we went back to doing the things the way our grandmothers did, we'd all be healthy and fine. Uh, come on. And we'd probably all be having 12 kids too. <laughs> you know, like they were much more. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah maybe we don't want that right now but yeah <laughs> okay so it was great to, it was lovely to be with all of you i hope this call was a value for you um next week will probably just be a half an hour call but it was really great to reconnect after this new year we have a lot of great things that we're focusing on in the coming year but in a in a focused way there are things that are going to be accomplished you know under the healthy community certification focus and working with some really great companies so, uh, other organizations. So I hope that you will stay involved, open up the emails, respond, tell us if you want to do something or you have a new idea or a new supplement or anything like that. Okay. Cause we really do want to hear from you. Thank you very much, everybody. We really appreciate you being on. Take care. Have a great night. Thank you. Bye, -bye. Bye everybody.